going to do a little video of kind of a review of what in a typical Algebra 2 book would be a section or a couple sections on rational exponents and radicals. And so the important thing to remember basically as you're going through these types of problems is we've got a back and forth that we can do. So if you have a radical supposed to be an a but it kind of looked like a nine if you have a radical and it has a power and a root then you can rewrite it as uh, the power on top and the root on bottom or if you start out with a rational exponent you can change it into a radical which um, will maybe make it easier to think about what's happening so on these first two questions i have here it says translate the expression with rational exponents into a radical expression simplify numerical expressions if possible. So on this first one where I just have x to a power, all it actually wants me to do is rewrite this with a, a radical symbol. And so there's actually two ways you can write that. You can write the fifth root of x to the ninth. That's one option and that's probably the better option. Or you actually can write it a different way uh, where you put the ninth power on the outside. So the fifth root of x raised to the ninth. So we kind of like the first one better as far as writing things down more succinctly um, with fewer things. But the second way, if we actually could find the fifth root of x, then um, like if it was a number instead, we'd want to think of it the second way, even if we didn't write it the second way. On the second one, we've got numbers. They're raised to the three fourth power. So we're going to start by rewriting this as the fourth root of 256 over 625 and um, that is to the third power so you could cube these and then try to find the fourth root but that seems uh, pretty difficult and so instead we want to think about is there a fourth root of 256 and is there a fourth root of 625 um, both of these are perfect squares. 256 is 16 squared and 625 is 25 squared so if you happen to have your perfect squares memorized that's actually helpful because the fourth root then it'd be like you needed another square root um, or if you're able to use your calculator that's helpful or if you just want to do some quick mental math on the likeliest uh, likeliest suspects like if it ends in five it's probably going to be five and if you go through the math five times five times five times five is 625 so um, the fourth root of 625 is five and i am allowed to do these separately. I don't have to try to find the fourth root of the fraction altogether. The fourth root of 256 is 4. And then we still need to cube it. So again, we do this separately. 4 cubed is 64 and 5 cubed is 125. And because I can't simplify the fraction 4 fifths, I won't be able to simplify 64 over 125 because this is just 4 times 4 times 4 on top and 5 times 5 times 5 on bottom. And so they don't have any common factors that you can divide by. And um, the way I know that I needed to keep going is the instructions do say to simplify numerical expressions if possible. And so I was able to simplify them, which means I was supposed to simplify them. This uh, next question we've got says is each expression equivalent to 0.81 to the 0.8 and that might seem like a kind of weird question but 0.8 is a decimal it could be re rewritten as a fraction so we just need to be able to do a little conversion real quick um, so you could say this is 8 tenths and then you could go a step further and simplify and say that's 4 fifths so we're looking for do they have 0.81 to the 4 fifths B, they have the fraction upside down, so B is no. But on D, we do have a 4 fifths with our 0.81, so that's a yes. Then the other two choices we have, they've written it in radical notation. So what's important is to remember the fifth root, it's telling us the fifth root because the five's on the bottom, and then inside or outside, if they wrote it that way, we should have a fourth power, which is what A looks like. And then on C, they flip them around so it, this kind of question is testing us on do you understand what it means to have a decimal exponent that you can change it to a fraction but also do you understand how to convert to that radical form 
So let's look at numbers four through six. Translate the radical expression into an expression with rational exponents and simplify numerical expressions if possible. And the reason it's specifying numerical expressions is that on at least this first one, we could actually simplify the n sum, um, but it's not asking us to. Like we'll see later on, on a later problem, like you can say the fourth root of n to the seventh, you'll be able to take out an n and have three n's left over on the inside, but that's not what it wants us to do there. So we should not do that. It wants us to say that this is n to the seven fourths. And then since you can't simplify seven fourths, that's simply our answer. On number five, we got three things in here inside of our parentheses and all of those three things are to the fourth power. And then we've got the six root. So we're gonna start by rewriting it with our rational exponent. And one of the reasons rational exponents are helpful here is because it may not have been obvious that this would simplify the four and the six until we see it as a fraction. We can think of this instead as two thirds. And what we want to do, because it says to simplify numerical expressions as possible, is we just wanna do a quick check and think, can I do 27 to the, to the two thirds? Um, and so the third is saying the third the cube root. So can I find the cube root of 27? Which, yes, I can. So I'm trying to figure out, can I do the cube root of 27? And if so, then I need to square it. Cube root of 27 is 3, and then 3 squared is 9. So we can do 27 to the 2 thirds, but we can't do pi or x to the 2 thirds. We can't make those look any nicer. You would find a decimal for pi, but it's not, just in general, we don't like doing that in math. We'd rather leave it as pi. So this is what our answer, our best answer would look like here. Pi, sorry, nine, and then the pi x are still in the parentheses to the two thirds power. Number six. So four on the outside, three on the inside. Let's change this to 16 to the three fourths. This is actually a problem where um, you might find it easier to think of it in radical notation, even though it asked us to express it with rational exponents. What we're hoping whenever we express it as a rational exponent is that it somehow makes our math easier. But in this case, um, for whatever reason, it'd be easier to say, well, the fourth root of 16 is two, and then I would still need to cube the two, and that would give me eight. And so that would be my answer. Okay, so on this side of the paper, we've got properties of exponents from algebra one that we're using. So things like adding the exponents when we are, when we've got multiplication. Um, so I'll put a few out to the side here, like x squared times x cubed equals x to the fifth, because we add the two and the three. Or x squared over x cubed, you subtract the exponents, two minus three, get x to the negative one. And that means you would then move it down to the bottom of a fraction. Uh, or if you have two exponents next to each other with parentheses, you multiply them together and get x to the sixth. Those are the sorts of properties that we're thinking about here. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna do the inside of the parentheses first, although there is more than one way to do this problem. I'm gonna do the inside first, so I'm gonna do nine halves minus three fourths, and I need a common denominator because I'm working with fractions. So I have to multiply the top and bottom by two, so 18 fourths minus 3 fourths is 15 fourths. So what I can do is write the inside as just 49 to the 15 fourths, and the 2 fifths is still on the outside. So now what I want to do is multiply those together. I want to say what's 15 fourths times 2 fifths? So I would cancel out 4 and 2, and 5 and 15, and it looks like that gives me 3 halves. So then I have 49 to the 3 halves. And I do want to simplify if possible. So I need to think real quick. And it should be a good sign. Like when you see the number 49, you should think, oh, I know the square root of 49 is 7 um, at this point in your math career. Hopefully that's a thought that goes through your head pretty easily. So because it's a 2 on bottom, we are trying to find the square root of 49. And then we are trying to cube it. So we're going to find the square root of 49 and get 7. And then we're going to say, well, what's 7 cubed? That'd be 49 times 7. 
which is 343. So that ends up being our answer, 343. Some of these end up being really nice, satisfying numbers at the end. Some of them don't. Um, so that's just how this sort of thing goes. On 8, we're going to first change these to rational exponents. So the, the idea is that if we have exponents, then we can subtract or add or multiply with those fractions. Whereas right now, these aren't the same root, and so I can't just like cancel out the m's or the n's. If it was the sixth root on bottom or the square root on top, and so the roots match, then yeah, we could just go ahead and, and cancel and then worry about the radical. But that's not, that's not what ha is happening, unfortunately. So these each have their own power. So when I write m, I'm going to write m to the 11, 6. And when I write n, that's going to be to the 10, 6. And then I'm going to have m to the 3 halves and n to the 2 halves. Now two of these like look pretty nice now because I can do 10 sixths, which is 5 thirds, and I can do 2 over 2, which is 1. What I want to do is subtract my exponents now, and so I have m's and n's. You have to put the m's together and the n's together. You can't um, somehow morph this into a new letter that has an m and an n like smushed together. You have to leave them separate. So I need to do 11 sixths minus 3 halves, and then I need to do 5 thirds minus 1. So this needs to change to something over 6, so we times by 3, so 9 over 6. 11 6 minus 9 6 is 2 6, which ends up being 1 3rd, and we're not going to be able to do anything else with that. The n is 5 thirds minus 1, which leaves us with 2 thirds, and I, there's nothing I can do with that. All right, number 9. So... Hopefully, as you've been working through problems in sections like this, you've started to become more familiar with the powers, the, the low powers of numbers. So 36 is 6 squared, and we've got a 6 here, and 216 is 6 to the third power. And so if we make that, uh, that change to 6s, that this is 6 cubed, this one's a little tricky. It's already squared, and we want to change it to 6 squared, so that makes it 6 to the fourth. Um, now that they're all sixes, we're going to change them to rational exponents. And then we're going to add our exponents together. Um, so that's just one. We got three fifths and one half, which make ten for our denominator. So this would be six tenths, and this would be five tenths, which together makes eleven tenths when you add this other one to that. You're adding 10 tenths, so that's 21 tenths. Now, what we want to do, because 21 tenths is a number that is bigger than 10, like the numerator is bigger than 10, is we're actually going to separate this into two things, because we can find part of this, but not all of it. What I mean by that is 21 tenths, 10 goes in twice with one left over. So we actually can rewrite this as 6 squared, times 6 to the 1 tenth, and then we can find 6 squared, so that's 36 times 6 to the 1 tenth, and that would be our answer. Now it's a little weird, especially um, knowing where to stop on a problem like that. Uh, so I get that, um, but that one's a little weird. Number 10, the cube root of a whole bunch of stuff. So this is trying to get us to work through the idea of simplifying. And so I'm actually going to just go ahead and write this out as four different things that we're trying to do. You don't have to do this. You can probably think about this in your head instead of having to write it down, but I want to be able to like gesture to what's happening. So the cube root of 162, we need to know what divides into 162. There is not an actual cube root of 162, but if it contains a perfect cube like 8 or 27 or um, 64 or 81, then we want to, not 81? Eight. Well, we want to we wanna figure out what it is, basically. So when I divide 2 into it, I get 81. 81 doesn't have a, is not a perfect cube, so I'd have to keep going. 81 is 9 and 9, so we've got 3 and 3, 
and 3 and 3. And when you use a factor tree to try to simplify a radical, what you're looking for is if it's the cube root, I want a set of three numbers that are the same. That means that I can rewrite this as three cube roots of, and I put the two remaining numbers that I didn't use back underneath, so three cube roots of six. So that's that done. When I'm doing this with variables, it can be easier to think of it, surprise, as rational exponents, because if I change this to six thirds, I can see Oh, well, that's just x squared. But if I change this to 5 thirds, it does not simplify. But what I can do is I can say, what is this as a mixed number? Kind of like what I did on the previous problem, 1 and 2 thirds. So that means that I have a y that I can put on the outside, but I still have two y's that need to go onto the inside. So when I'm simplifying, y to the fifth power. Another way of thinking of it is that I'm breaking it up into y cubed and y squared because I can find the cube root of y cubed and get y and that pulls the y out. But the y squared you can't take the cube root of so it has to stay underneath. So whichever of those two ways you want to think of it. So if you want to think of it the second way for this one you're trying to figure out how many z cubes do you have because each of these z cubes can go out of your radical as z, but you have one extra one, the tenth one, that doesn't have two other z's to go with, and so it has to stay under. So this gives you a z, this gives you a z, and this gives you a z on the outside. So z cubed, cube root of z. If we did ten thirds as a way to simplify instead, you do the three into ten, and it'd go three times with one left over. So see we've got z cubed and then we still have a z to the first power inside. So to write this all together we have a 3 on the outside, we have an x squared on the outside, we have a y and we have a z cubed. And then our cubed root is going to have a 6, a y squared, and a z. And so that is our answer. I think those are really fun personally. I think it's neat to like try to figure out how many of them can I take out and then what's left over on the inside. So that's kind of a basic gist of rational exponents and radicals and simplifying happy mathing.